Higdon Outdoors Television is brought to you by Heavy Shot, the industry leader in performance shot shell ammunition. Tetra, hear the hunt. Yukonuba, the official dog food of Higdon Outdoors. Momarsh, hunt hard, hide easy. This is the inspiration. From man, from when I was in high school and my dad was uh, running the company, it wasn't a TV show, but we were making you know uh, DVDs and cassettes back then. Somewhere you know, about ten years ago, um, we knew that we needed to uh, have our own show. When HOTV started, you know, they asked me to to fill in and kind of co-host. And, and and growing TV, up, check us out again. especially in calling contests, which is kind of what I'm known for. I was always the kid. And then now I'm looking around and I'm kind of the oldest guy there as far as the guys with the TV show outside of Ira, you know, so it's a little different, I guess. I had always, always, always dreamt about making a living hunting and or fishing. Got the opportunity to come on at Higdon, working in the warehouse, uh, putting, as I used to call it, stickers on boxes. One day, John and Ben Higdon cornered me. I was like, this is it, you know? And they're like, hey, you wanna go to Canada? And I was like, yep. I was a full-time guide in Southeast Arkansas around the Stuttgart area. So my phone rang, Boone and Kurt called me. I said, of course, I'll take you guys spec hunting. I've got an opening tomorrow. My first rodeo with HOTV was, was that hunt, just letting them come hunt with me and thinking I knew what I was doing, but I didn't. I met them at the NWTF convention and I heard these new carbon fiber goose calls. Like I had to try them. I came up and picked one up. Brooke says, Bo, do you want to come work for Higdon. And I'm like, yeah, take me to the airport in Montana. I'm in. And Brooke actually picked me up in the airport. I was wearing a wig <laughs> and he walked right past me. I mean, and when we go out to the fields, I mean, every day it's, it's with a focus first and foremost of providing a good quality TV show. As soon as we get out of bed, there's a camera in my face. And you know, it's like, okay, yeah, these guys are working. And that's, that's the big difference, right? It changes everything. It changes how you think about it, um, changes how you hunt. Uh, it's much more challenging. If you want to know what outdoor television is like, you know, when I say, hey, watch this flock here to the right at two o'clock, when that happens, you know, there's seven, eight cameras that turn on instantaneously. And I can tell you right now, uh, the levels of complication and, and what can go wrong um, is a lot more extreme when you bring three camera guys and 10 cameras out in the woods. I will say, I love not filming and just hunting. 
when we're filming, we're getting four or five hours of sleep and it's, it's a job and it's work. Cameramen go through a lot. We go through a lot. Some days tensions are high. Some days the highs are really high and the lows are really low. Filming sessions, they can be way up here and they can be way down here, depending if the GoPros work that day. <laughs> One time we went out there and John, uh, we had like the best hunt we've ever had. And we got back where everybody was so fired up about it. And he literally forgot to plug the mic in the back. That's when we made the shift to go from, you know, a duck hunter running a camera and not really knowing what he's doing uh, to, you know, finding Kurt. He was very capable of filming, editing the show. And we, you know, kind of sat, went and talked to him and said, hey, man, let, let's go do this thing. And he was fired up about it. So we, we, uh, we went and gave it a shot. I mean, Johnny, Steve, and Kurt, I mean, Nate, I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on, and workers. I mean, you know, the time, if, if people only knew the amount of work it went into to provide one episode. There's a tremendous amount of people and a tremendous amount of talent in our camp that work here full time. They're able to add an element of romance, if you will, and passion uh, in filmmaking and, and cinematography that a lot of other shows, quite frankly, just don't have. They have just as much, if not more, passion about what they're doing as I and everybody else do about hunting. Polar opposites. They are camera dudes that we have to teach a little bit about hunting, and we are hunters that they try their damnedest to teach us a little bit about cinematography so it can mesh. And the EMP crew checks every box. We show up, we go through our checklist, we're organized in the beginning and they're organized about their thoughts about how can we do additive things to add to the storyline because you know let's face it i mean just a video of just shooting ducks yeah we like to watch that for about oh, 30 seconds and then you know you, you need some other stuff to fill in there and so they do a great job i'm very appreciative of of the group Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. Bo is just one of those people. His passion and his energy is unmatched by anybody that I have ever seen in my entire life. When I met Bo, we were both younger, but he was just a kid. He was just a little kid from Washington. He was in Nashville. He was looking at calls, and I'm like, it's a freaking kid, man. Like, he's got a weird Washington accent. I don't know you, dude. And then next, you know, years down the road, Bo and I are traveling together and hunting and filming and going through hell at some times together. So be nice to people and when you first meet them because you never know where you're going to. You might end up with them in a boat in the middle of the Columbia River rolling up on another boat in the dark, potentially going to fight, okay? So you gotta be nice to people you meet because you do not know where it's gonna take you. Bo has an ability with a game call, whether it's elk, turkey, deer, that probably nobody else will ever have. He's probably the most pound for pound in all species, the best caller that's alive today. And I'm fortunate to have him on our team, and I know we pick at each other a lot, but that's the honest to goodness truth. He is so talented. And, and I think people will really realize uh, the stuff that he can do on a call, how difficult that is. He's so talented, like talent that the rest of us just don't have. Um, talented in kind of a quirky way. The very first time I met Brooke was in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Every once in a while you meet people that you've never met before, but you're just like, you sure we've never met before? Like it, and it just, it meshes. Way I look at it, if you're gonna be a turd in a punch bow, be the biggest, prettiest turd in the biggest punch bow you can find. <laughs> uh, it's an outstanding hunter, incredible duck caller. Not only that, incredible spec caller. Uh, his knowledge of spec calls is, is outstanding. He's from Louisiana, he's kinda 
kind of born and raised and cut his teeth were Specs Winter. If, if there was someone that I had to turn the reins over to for my legacy, um, to be the day-to-day -day guy, Brooke is the guy that does that. He takes care of the things that are important to me, and Brooke takes care of making sure that, that Momarsh is continuing to be what I've always wanted it to be, and I totally appreciate that. You know, Brooke was on our pro staff, and I was like, man, this young kid, he's like calling me every night, showing me pictures of, you know, the spec decoys painted and all this stuff. I said, we ought to call him and see. I think he'd be a really good fit to come in and help us in a leadership role at, at Power Calls. I lived with Brooke every time I came to Paducah for the first three years, I lived with Brooke. We've been through the lows, through the highs, through the muck. I mean, we have literally been through everything. I mean, He's my best friend. New from Higdon Outdoors, the Apex One Piece Full Size Canada Goose Decoy. Our Apex Stake System gives you lightning fast setup and realistic motion. Precise detail highlights every feather with XHD Hyper Feathering. Finish birds closer and maximize your hunt. Visit HigdonOutdoors.com or your local retailer. Higdon's One Piece Canada Goose Decoy, Apex. Camera guys, just don't walk back that way. There's a big ditch. I don't want you to go under like I did Boone last, last time he was here. <laughs> well, I think season, might have been season two or season one. We probably didn't get off on the best start. I played a joke on Boone. It was at Kelly's place. So we were down there, we were hunting, they'd get a little boat high and we took the boat out there. Here we go. And we nudge the nose of this war go up on the bank. And I'm like, okay, I've been around duck boats and water and stuff. I, like, I understand what's going on. We were pulling up to the bank and he said, hey Kelly, can I get out here? And we were in a boat. And I said, oh yeah, sure. And I said it jokingly thinking that I thought surely he knows he can't get out here because it's a huge ditch. Duh, I'm 18 inches from the bank. It's going to be knee deep. I was expecting an angle. I was prepared bloop, all the way under. He just jumps out like it's knee deep water. And the next thing I know, his hat's floating. It turned out to be a big dredge ditch that nobody told me about. So it was a straight down. I went up to my shoulders, somehow pulled myself back in the boat with upper body strength that I don't have, didn't have. I levitated. So, and I'm trying to get him back in the boat and do the whole thing. And we had to go to final flight, had to get him some clothes to wear home. And I mean, I felt awful. I was like, gosh, I thought you thought you knew I was joking. But in reality, he thought I was serious. So that's kind of how we got started off. But it's been a good friendship and uh, proud to have him on board. And it's always a joy when Boone tags along. So yeah, I think Kelly has told that story a hundred times. I'm like, that's me. I did that. Kelly tried to drown me. My name's Boone, have a good night, you know. Kelly has been a huge light in my life. Kelly has helped me in ways that he truly doesn't know as far as goose calling goes. Me just being around him has helped so much. I, for some reason, just calling to me, being around somebody and just like watching how they're doing it and like use your hand this way and that way and just it's molded me into the collar that I am today. I take, pick and choose what I want to learn from him, from Brooke, world champions, all world champions, and I got them all at my disposal. I mean, and I, I, I'm just a sponge when it comes to calling. I remember I was trying to prove myself to Kelly one day, and I picked up a whistle, and I was just, and I, because I believe wholeheartedly those whistles work better than about anything. And I, I grew up, it's a place where you can run the crap out of them, and I ran them. I look back at Kelly, and he goes, he told Brooke later that day, he's like, that boy knows how to run a whistle. He said, he's gonna be all right. He understands and he, he gets it. And I'm like, that's got his approval. So that was a huge deal to me. Well, Kelly Powers is, is somebody that's been in the industry for a long time, like I have. And, uh, you know, he's got so much insight to a lot of things and, and we just really enjoy visiting together and because you know his depth and breadth of knowledge of the industry and farming and farming products and managing and 
you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to talk to him because we've both done it for a long time in a lot of different ways and we can share information and knowledge and both understand what each other are talking about. Kelly's wonderful. He's our tried and true, true and steady, devil's advocate, been there, done it, and we lean heavily on him as our sounding board. Do you think this is going to work? What's the setup? Kelly's super methodical. He's very well thought out, and he's taught us to think things through and get multiple plans in place, and it really helps the success of our TV show. Growing up as a younger guy um, in the central Mississippi flyway, you knew who Kelly Powers was. And then, like fate has it, man, uh, get a little bit older, come on here. Next thing you know, I'm hunting geese in Ontario with Kelly. And get him! I don't know what Kelly did, but it seems to be working fairly decent. Hey, Kelly. Yes, sir. What's if you can move something to make them be more on my side, that would be wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what that would be. Hey. Oh, come on, bud. Let's go. Go, go, go. Get in, get in, get in. I'm just like, man, this is like a twilight zone. I'm like, what has happened here? I'd met Kelly several times, but we, we were at a calling contest at John A. Logan. My goodness, this was when he was probably 16 or 17, so I was younger than that. When he stepped on the stage at that calling contest and uh, started ripping, he just absolutely killed it. I mean, he sounded so much different than everybody else. We've worked with him for 20 years now, and he's been a part of, I would say, every decoy idea we have today that's successful. Um, Kelly was at least a part of that, that research, that conversation, that uh, is this a good idea? Is this gonna help us kill birds? Or is the customer gonna receive this product and this concept? Uh, he was there, whether it was on a tailgate or a conference call or in a blind or whatever, you know, he was right there. And I'll tell you, Kelly, you know, uh, people probably watch the show and see Kelly giving all this instructionals or these tips and all that. That is not forced. He likes to talk about it. He's a true um, student of the sport, you know, and, and, and I think he just, he just soaks it in, right? He's kind of a he's kind of a waterfowling nerd in some ways, right? You know, he just loves all of it. He just soaks it in, and uh, so thank God. I, if I ever have a question, I promise you about a duck blind, a water control structure, a pump, call KP. <laughs>
I mean, what hunting means to me is, is literally life. I, I don't, I, I can't imagine, I mean, we're gonna get, when we get done with this interview, I'm gonna go drill some, some oats and some clover for deer. first started the business and things were uh, smaller than they are. I can remember we were in here on our computers and you know we have gloves on and you could see our breath you know like typing an order in and you know got our headset on talking to another customer and you know taping up a FedEx box right and uh, you know from then to now not only has the business changed but also you know personally like I can't go out and hunt 60 days a year right? I've got three you know uh, three kids and family and you know all that stuff so I mean life's just like that right I mean ultimately you know we do what we're passionate about take pride in what we're doing and try and give back a little bit and that's all you can do.